Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. One of my favorite activities in the world is riding my bicycle. So I thought I'd make a video to show you how you calculate the speed of a bicycle. Um, what we're gonna do is look at all the rotational kinematics involved in riding a bicycle and making the wheel turn. So we're gonna specifically look at the chain, what's happening in the front sprocket versus the rear sprocket, and then apply all of that knowledge to calculate how fast the bike moves if I'm rotating the pedals at a certain RPM. Like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. And if you have the means, consider donating using super thanks down below. All right, folks, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with our bicycle here. And what we're gonna do here is just zoom in on the chain, the front chain ring and the rear chain ring. We'll come back to the overall picture in just a second. So if we kind of uh, just look at the different pieces here of our system, this is what we have, right? We have the pedals that are connected to this uh, front sprocket here. And the front sprocket here is going to rotate at some angular frequency that I'm going to call omega f, f for the front. Uh, the radius of the front sprocket here, I've written it as rf. And also, you can count the number of teeth here in the front sprocket. I'm going to denote that as nf for the number of teeth in the front. In the rear, again, I have similar definitions, except I use a different subscript to denote the angular frequency of this rear sprocket and also different radius. It clearly is going to have a smaller number of teeth, at least in this picture. Now, one thing to note is that as you're pedaling here, as you're rotating these pedals, um, the chain is going to move, right? The chain is going to move in this, this direction shown here. And one thing that is key to understanding this problem is that the speed of the chain at any position must be the same, okay? That is really a key. And how do you know that? Well, imagine if the chain wasn't moving at the same speed everywhere. If you would look at this specific link right here, compare it to this specific link, they are a fixed distance away from each other. Now imagine if this link here moves faster than this one, well, what does that mean? It means that they're getting closer together and you can't have that. So this is really one of the key items to understand in this problem is that the speed of the chain is going to be the same everywhere, even along here, even along here. We typically call this a tangential velocity when we are looking at something going around in a circle. Um, and over here in the straight segment, then you would just draw the velocity of the chain in the direction of the chain itself. All right, so here's kind of a zoomed in picture of what's going on. Now I've counted the number of teeth here in the front um, sprocket versus the rear. I had 40 teeth in the front and 15 in the back. Now one thing to remember about this chain here is that the distance between the pins, for example, is what we call the pitch. And for this chain, it's clearly going to be a constant value, right? Um, so how would we express that? Um, we can get a relationship here between that pitch and the total circumference to the number of teeth. So whether you're looking at the rear or the front, the pitch here has to be the same. So I'm going to call that pitch distance here. Let's just call it little d. So I have to have d is the same for the front and the rear. Now, in the rear, what you could do is how would you calculate the pitch? Imagine you had a chain that's completely wrapped around. So you would have, well, the total distance is 2 pi, uh, the radius of the rear, and divided by the number of teeth that you have. In this case, it's nr. This here has to be equal to the pitch of the chain in the front because it's constant. Here you have 2 pi, um, the radius of this front sprocket, so I call it rf, and now divided by the number of teeth in the front. Now, since those are the same, what you can do here is you can get to a nice relationship here between what's going on at the front versus the back. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite this here. So we have uh, the radius of the front divided by the radius of the back of the rear. Uh, this here must be equal to this ratio of the number of teeth in those sprockets. All right, go ahead and box that. This is going to be an important relationship. Now, the other thing that is important between the rear and the front, as I said, is that the speed of the chain is also the same. So whether you look at the front or the back, they must be the same. So let's look here at the rear. How would you express the speed of the chain here in terms of some of these properties over here? 
the rear is spinning here um, at some angular frequency we're calling omega r. So how do you link this tangential speed to an angular frequency? You do that through this relationship. It's the radius of uh, the rear sprocket multiplied by that angular frequency. And that must be equal to the radius of the front mul multiplied by the angular frequency of the front. So what I want to do now is get to an expression for this angular frequency of the back sprocket right here. That's my omega r. So let's go ahead and just take this one step further. So I'll just bring this um, radius of the rear sprocket down to the other side. So I have this ratio here of the front to the back multiplied by whatever my angular frequency of the front is. Now if I use my expression here, I can also write this just in terms of the number of teeth. So I can replace this ratio of RF over RR as the number of teeth in the front divided by the number of teeth in the back, okay, multiplied by omega F. All right, so this is going to be a very important equation for us, and we're mo moving our way to being able to calculate the speed of the bike. Let's go to the next page now and try to link what's going on in the front to what's happening with the pedals. All right, so we have our uh, angular frequency of the front here in this equation, and my goal is to connect it to how fast the pedals are rotating, and that is this quantity up here, omega of the pedal. Well, one thing you should note is from this bicycle is that all of these are connected to each other, right? If the pedals rotate at some angular frequency, it means this front chain ring also rotates at the exact same frequency. So we have to have this, that our angular frequency of the pedal equals to the same angular frequency of the front chain ring. So let's rewrite then our expression here for the rear in terms of our angular frequency of the pedal. All right, so this is our important equation here. And hey, I'll just write pedals. All right, let's box this equation up. And now we only need one more step to being able to calculate the speed of the bike. Let's go to the next page to see how that's done. All right, so the goal is to calculate how fast this bike is moving. Well, all right, so we had our expression here for the angular speed of rotation of the rear sprocket. But in order to calculate the speed of the bike, we need to connect this to the wheel angular frequency. But the wheel angular frequency has to be the same as this rear sprocket right here. So if you make this substitution, right, everything here, all the spokes, the wheel, the tires, they all rotate at, at the same angular frequency as the rear sprocket. So you simply make this substitution here, and now we're one step closer to calculating the speed of the bike. All right, to understand how to calculate the speed of the bike, uh, we're first going to imply something called a no-slip condition. If the wheel simply rolls, so it's not sliding, there is a link here between the velocity of the center of the wheel, which we often call the velocity of the center of mass, and the rate at which it's rotating, which I'm calling omega of the wheel. And that condition looks like this, okay? That the velocity of the center of mass of the wheel is equal to the radius of that wheel multiplied by that angular frequency, omega of the wheel. Now, the velocity of the center of mass of the wheel is going to be equal to the speed of the bike and equal to every portion of this bike frame. Everything is going to be moving here to the right with that same speed. So you can make this substitution right here. So replace velocity of the center of mass by the speed of the bike. All right, our next thing that we wanna do now is simply use our equation up above for that angular frequency of the wheel and you substitute that expression down in the speed of the bike and look what we have. If I substitute a radius of the wheel in meters, if I substitute this ratio of the number of teeth in the front versus the back, and I calculate a angular frequency of the pedals in radians per second, I would get a speed of the bike in meters per second. My goal is then going to be to convert that to get a speed to convert the units from meters per second to get miles per hour at the end. So let's look at a numerical example now. All right, to understand how to calculate the speed of the bike, uh, we're first going to imply something called a no-slip condition. 
if the wheels simply roll so it's not sliding, there is a link here between the velocity of the center of the wheel, which we often call the velocity of the center of mass, and the rate at which it's rotating, which I'm calling omega of the wheel. And that condition looks like this, okay? That the velocity of the center of mass of the wheel is equal to the radius of that wheel multiplied by that angular frequency, omega of the wheel. Now, the velocity of the center of mass of the wheel is going to be equal to the speed of the bike and equal to every portion of this bike frame. Everything is going to be moving here to the right with that same speed. So you can make this substitution right here. So replace velocity of the center of mass by the speed of the bike. All right, our next thing that we want to do now is simply use our equation up above for that angular frequency of the wheel, and you substitute that expression down in the speed of the bike, and look what we have. If I substitute a radius of the wheel in meters, if I substitute this ratio of the number of teeth in the front versus the back, and I calculate a angular frequency of the pedals in radians per second, I would get a speed of the bike in meters per second. My goal is then going to be to convert that to get a speed to convert the units from meters per second to get miles per hour at the end. So let's look at a numerical example now.